First, I want to acknowledge representatives from other state and voluntary services who have provided invaluable support over the last 24 hours, including the Irish Coast Guard, the Coast Guard Rescue Helicopter 118, Irish Air Corps Medivac 112, Northern Ireland Ambulance HEM Service, Irish Community Air Ambulance, Northern Ireland Urban Search and Rescue, MEVA Fire Service, Donegal Mountain Rescue, Northern Ireland Ambulance Service Heart Team, Donegal County Council Civil Defence, and most importantly, the community in Creaselock. Yesterday, Friday the 8th of October, at approximately 3.20 p.m., an explosion occurred at a building complex in Creaselock County, Donegal. I can now confirm there are 10 fatalities as a result of that explosion. The emergency services continue a search and recovery operation at the site this afternoon. But based on the information available to Angarda Siakana, at this time it is not expected that there will be any further casualties located and there are no outstanding reports of unaccounted for persons. The 10 casualties are four men, three women, two teenagers, a boy and a girl, and a younger girl. The thoughts of all the emergency service personnel who have attended the scene over the last 24 hours, the local community in Creaselock and the nation are today with the deceased and their families. In respect for the deceased, I now ask for a short, silent pause in their memory. I will now ask Gary Martin, Director of Emergency Services at Dundagall County Council, to provide a briefing on the on ongoing local authority and fire service response. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, I want to confirm that Dundagall County Council Fire Service mobilised six brigade areas yesterday afternoon to Creaslaw, including 65 fire service personnel. Uh, in addition to that, we deployed 20 Donegal County Council Civil Defence personnel, a structural engineer, and to facilitate the fending off of the area, road service personnel. Uh, I want to acknowledge the assistance from our colleagues in the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service, who attended with specialist equipment uh, and search dogs. I also want to acknowledge the huge input from the local community who attended in huge numbers from yesterday afternoon uh, in Creaslaw and who contributed so much to our efforts there. Our primary focus yesterday uh, was to lead uh, on the search and recovery uh, of the injured and to stabilise what was a substantially damaged building, including many displaced and broken concrete slabs. Over the course of last night and following uh, a detailed analysis of the site, by our crews, uh, aided by search dogs and cameras and listening equipment, the incident moved into a search and recovery phase. We will remain on site uh, in an ongoing search and check phase to ensure that there are no remaining casualties in the building. I'd like to acknowledge the cooperation of everyone involved uh, uh, as we went about our work yesterday and today and in particular, our major emergency management colleagues in the primary response agencies of the Gardaí and the HSE. Finally, and on behalf of the Council, as members and staff, I want to pass on our sincere condolences to the families and friends of the victims of this terrible tragedy. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. I'm now going to ask JJ McGowan, Chief Ambulance Officer for the Western Region of the National Ambulance Service, to provide a briefing on the National Ambulance Service response to this incident. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> on behalf of the HSE and the National Ambulance Service, I wish to express our deepest sympathies in relation to this terrible tragedy which has unfolded increasingly yesterday. To our staff, including those in the hospital and community health, words cannot describe your efforts. Each and every one of you have gone above and beyond in your response. A special word of thanks also goes to those who have provided medical assistance to us. Uh, these include, but are not limited to, the Northern Ireland Ambulance Service and their heart team and their aeromedical services, the Irish Community Air Ambulance, ground crews, 
uh, the, the Coast Guard Rescue 118 helicopter and the Letterkenny University Hospital Forward Surgical Team. A special word of thanks also goes to Dr Jerry Lane uh, who assisted on behalf of the Irish Community Air Ambulance. Uh, we will continue our efforts to work with our colleagues in the Gardaí and the fire service until all recovery efforts have concluded. Yesterday we transported eight patients from the scene, one of whom was critical and further transported to a hospital in Dublin. Seven of the patients transported uh, at this time remain in a stable condition. Uh, the National Ambulance Service allocated a total of eight emergency ambulances yesterday and three this morning. We also. Uh, uh, dispatched two uh, intermediate care or patient transport vehicles, four doctors and four ambulance officers. We currently have two emergency ambulances, uh, two ambulance officers and one doctor on the scene. Uh, our thoughts remain with the bereaved victims, those injured, fellow responders, the community and all those who have contributed to the rescue efforts. From 12 noon today, counselling and further services have been put in place by the HSE at Creasley Community Day Care Centre. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. I'm now going to ask Superintendent David Kelly of Milford Garda Station to provide a briefing on Garda Shea Corner's response and what the next steps in the investigation of this incident will be. Good afternoon. Uh, if I may say thank you for coming here today. Yesterday afternoon I went to a meeting in Falcara, actually driving by the location where this happened. Little did I think I'd be standing before you here today. This is a tragedy for our community. There's families left devastated. And I suppose I just want to start off by offering on behalf of myself and my colleagues that attended the scene yesterday and indeed are continuing to do so, our, our very sincere condolences. You've heard from my colleagues from the two other services. Initially the fire service took the lead in this operation and they still do. We assisted them from a Garda perspective in terms of attending the scene, securing the scene, making it a safe place for themselves to work and their personnel, and indeed the HSE ambulance personnel. You've heard from my colleagues as well, there was great assistance given throughout, if you like, the, the relevant emergency services in this jurisdiction. We also received great help from our colleagues in Northern Ireland. That's what it is to be in Donegal. We look out for each other. I'd just like to say as well, uh, forgive me if I get a bit emotional because you're dealing with the public, you know. But I would say, in terms of what we did, I outlined that we worked with the uh, other services. At this point in time, we have to keep an open mind as a police service and how we investigate this. But at this inf our information at this point in time is pointing towards a tragic accident. That said, being a, a Garda, I have to take a holistic and overall viewpoint. But that's where we're going at the moment. We are working in consultation, as I say, with the coroner. In that regard, we've put family liaison officers in place with the families of the deceased. We're also working with the HSE in terms of the local community as well, in terms of offering, if you like, psychological safety to the families and the wider community in that regard. I suppose in terms of my own colleagues, and I know from my colleagues here with the fire service and the ambulance service, we have to think of the people from our own service that did attend. And again, the, ne the necessary uh, resources are being put in place in that regard. Uh, I'd just like, to, if you guard a response, as you, as you can imagine, the call comes in. We're directed by our North Regional Western uh, Control Centre, which is based in Galway. Resources were initially deployed from the Milford Garda district here, assisted by members that were off duty. I'm proud to say I didn't have to ask for people to turn out for duty. They came in. We were assisted by members from Letterkenny, uh, Ballyshannon, Bunkrana. Currently we're working with the Garda National Technical Bureau and they're giving us assistance. We have specialist units within Donegal, I'm not going to name them. Uh, suffice to say, any resource, like my colleagues have said, that is required, we are putting them in place and we are using them. Uh, I hope I've answered most of your questions, if not, I'm sure Liam and my colleagues can help afterwards. Thank you for your time. We're looking, into that. We're looking into that at the moment. We are following certain, if you like, investigative angles, but at this point in time, for operational reasons, I'm not going to go into that, please. Virgin Media. I can answer that, but I'll just ask my colleague from... Thank you. 
Yeah, uh, we transported eight patients. Serious, sorry, right? we transported eight patients to hospital yesterday. One of which is in critical condition, and we further transported that by air to a hospital in Dublin uh, yesterday evening uh, to the burden unit. Um, of the other seven, uh, at this time we believed they remain in a stable condition and have not life-threatening injuries. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. We're not going into age groups yeah, at this moment. Yeah, we're not going into age groups. Aileen. Again, unfortunately, at this time, it's it's not even 24 hours since this incident happened. As my colleague, Superintendent Kelly, said, we have family liaison officers dealing with very, very traumatised families at this time. So we're not going into any personal details of the families or the individuals involved just for the moment. Do Thank you. Know if all the people are local? My understanding is everybody involved are, are local to the, the North Donegal or, or the Creaselock area, yes. We don't have that specific information at this time. Again, the members from our technical bureau are, are, are attending the site. We are able to carry out some investigations, but at the moment the priority still remains the search of the site to ensure there is absolutely no, no other casualties, but we're quite satisfied that not at the moment. But that, that investigation by the technical bureau will go on over the next number of days. Yes, yes. So it will. Over the next number of days, it will be taken. The time will be taken to ensure that this is investigated fully to determine any of the causes of, of, of what has caused this tragic accident. The younger child is a girl. Yes. Aileen, was there another question? Anybody else? Any other questions, Sarah? At this point in time, as uh, Superintendent uh, Kelly has said, all the indications are that it is a tragic accident. However, the investigation will determine the exact nature of the cause. But at this moment in time, it would appear to be a tragic accident. Is it clear how soon after the... Sorry. Again, we have to determine the exact cause of the accident before we can start going down the, down, down the route of, of uh, identifying any particular problem. So at the moment, and that will follow as, as, as we identify more issues in relation to this cause of the accident. Is there any information as to how uh, long before the first emergency uh, ambulance arrived on the scene? My understanding, um, emergency services are on the scene within less than 10 minutes. Um, unfortunately, I, I wasn't there myself, and I don't think any of my three colleagues were necessarily there himself. But I know talking both to my own colleagues in the Gary Shikona, and I know JJ and Gary talking to their colleagues, it was a very, very traumatic scene that people came across. It was a very, very confused scene, as, as you can imagine. Um, there was a lot of debris. There was a lot of um, very, very you know, traumatised people you know, already at the scene. So our colleagues definitely will all be provided with their own counselling services by our own agencies to try and deal with what was a, a very, very tragic situation. Um, circumstances that they arrived at this time yesterday afternoon. And just on the operation, is there anything similar like this um, environment This is probably one of the largest civilian casualties in, in recent times um, that any of our services have probably dealt with um, and certainly certainly one of the largest um, civilian casualties in, the, in, in, in this region, um, certainly over recent years or decades. The search and recovery operation is still ongoing to be 100% sure that the search site is clear, but any person that was reported to us as being unaccounted for, we can now account for. But obviously we just need to make sure that there is nobody else out there that we're not aware of. So that search and recovery operation will continue for the next few hours and then it will become a guard on Garish Garden that will then take the lead. Um, the investigation will take, take its course over the next few days. Obviously, post-mortems will need to be carried out on uh, the bodies of, of all the deceased and working with the coroner and the state pathologist service on that. That will take place over the next few days. My understanding is that 10 fatalities were all fatalities at the scene. All the bodies have been removed at this stage. My understanding is they've all been removed to Letterkenny um, University Hospital at this stage. Can I ask you the response of the local community, Superintendent? The response of the local community has been um, overwhelming. Um, they were dealing in a situation in their village, <coughs> in their local people, their neighbours. Um, they turned out in great numbers and gave great assistance to the emergency services. And it, it's, it's remarkable and admirable as to how they reacted. 
that, that will be eventually for the state pathologist office to determine and obviously there are 10 post-mortems to be done so we will work closely with them um, as to how, how, how that needs process needs to happen. That will be for the state pathologist office or the coroner's office to determine. Okay. Uh, again, we'll hopefully maybe try and give some sort of a, a short update later on, on today, but again, again, we'll just have to wait and see as things pan out over the next few hours. Okay? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.